Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome to my studio and YouTube channel where I discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for oil and acrylic painters. In this video, we'll explore purple and violet pigments available to artists. Hello, and welcome to another one of my videos. Um, let's take a look at the purple and violet family. Um, all these are single pigment paint, so uh, none of these are mixes. Um, over here we have uh, Doxine Purple, Quinacridone Purple, uh, these are all violets, uh, Ultramarine Violet, Manganese Violet, and Cobalt Violet. And let's take a look how these perform. Okay, so we're going to do our typical methodology of uh, exploring these paints. Um, we're going to take this, these colors right here, correlate exactly to these colors over here. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of titanium dioxide and mix it in, see how it looks when we draw it down into our tints. We're going to come over here and uh, we're going to draw it down to see how our transparencies look and see how they look in glazes. All right, let's get started. Uh, let's start with uh, doxazine purple. This is the one that uh, most people will be familiar with. Um, this is a very powerful, very potent color. It's uh, almost black straight out of the tube. But as you uh, begin mixing in the titanium white or titanium dioxide, you start to look at, uh, you start to see how it's, um, it's a really nice saturated purple, much like our uh, thalos. It's a very, it'll um, overpower a mixture real quick if you're not careful with it. Now, of course, if you're painting representationally, uh, there's some flowers that um, you can't mix this purple. You, this purple is really hard to try and, and um, uh, mix. Uh, something like a morning glory or a lilacs, uh, colors that have a, a, just an incredible richness to them. Um, th this, this color comes in handy quite well for that. Um, otherwise, you typically would want to knock it back with its opposite, like a yellow, just to kind of not have it quite so... Um, so radiant. If you're wanting to paint a, a more saturated sky, um, especially at dusk or at dawn, like you want to paint the uh, belt of Venus, an atmospheric uh, phenomenon that happens right at dusk or dawn, or maybe the underside of clouds in a fiery sky. Um, uh, but I mean, I paint usually pretty saturated to begin with, but even I need to uh, knock, knock, <laughs> knock back uh, um, doxazine purple because it's just so, so powerful. But uh, dioxazine is a really great color. Um, if you use it, if uh, if you use it with caution, it's a, <laughs> just because of how powerful it is. Um, as you see when we come over to the glazes, you'll also see how powerful it is as a glaze. But um, um, okay, so let's move on to our next color, uh, quinacridone purple. Now, quinacridone purple isn't quite as uh, potent as dioxazine over here, but um, uh, it's a quinacridone, so it's going to have um, a lot of a lot of tent strength to it, but uh, but as you can tell, these are both purples. Um, the uh, the doxazine purple and the quinacridone purple they have a they have a red bias to them. They lean red, relatively speaking, in the color family. The other two color other three colors I'm sorry are going to be uh, a violet. So you'll see a difference in the the the, the hue at which they the bias they have. Of course, you can even between the, the purples between the doxazine and the and the um, uh, quinacridone, the quinacridone is going to lean a more uh, sort of raspberry red, um, a raspberry red purplish color versus the uh, a cooler doxazine, relatively speaking, to one another. Um, but um, yeah, so this is our uh, quinacridone um, purple. This was uh, Daniel Smith, I believe, is the only one that makes that. So. Uh, all right, so let's move on to um, ultramarine violet. So what's kind of cool about this color is it's basically ultramarine, ultramarine blue, that's been uh, heated up to a certain temperature to uh, alter the chemical composition to make it purple. Um, so let's take a look at it, or violet, I mean. And here we go, ooh, here we go. Now this doesn't have nearly as much tenth strength as our previous two. And in fact, does not have as much tin strength as ultramarine, uh, the synthetic ultramarine itself, bone, which is derived from. Apparently, the heating knocks it back on the tin strength uh, far less than what we have over here. Um, so it's, it, this actually works really great for representationally because you can get some really nice um, atmospheric perspective with mountains in the background uh, just by adding a little bit of um, titanium white and. Um, 
to really kind of help it uh, great down not it doesn't it's not nearly as saturated just by by looking at these two uh, three colors right here already but again this is uh, this is ultramarine violet uh, derived from ultramarine blue the synthetic ultramarine blue and uh, this is a really really great uh, very useful color um, okay so let's move on to our next pigment Okay, so let's move on to manganese violet. Now, mang manganese violet, well, that's a mouthful. Manganese violet is um, a really good um, color that uh, it's very light fast. Uh, mostly used in oil and watercolors. Has a little more saturation than our uh, ultramarine. And it definitely uh, has a, has a uh, leans more toward a, a warmer, uh, redder, Color that's very like very much is a uh, like a grayed down version of our quinacridone purple over here. Um, we can see a, an interesting uh, observation where we have uh, two pairs of colors, uh, two that are very saturated, and then two that are uh, not nearly as saturated, uh, more grayed down. Uh, so you have two colors that you could use if you wanted to paint representationally. Perhaps the ultramarine and the manganese would be a great color combination. Whereas if you're going to paint uh, more cartoony or illustrative work, perhaps the dioxazine and the quinacridone purple would be more uh, uh, beneficial for you. Okay, so let's move on to um, cobalt violet. Now of, of all our paints here, um, Ultramarine or uh, cobalt violet is going to be the most expensive, so it's like a series five, series six. Um, I wouldn't necessarily if you're going to paint real opaquely, this is the perfect one because it's super um, starts off very um, opaque and saturated, but then as you add white uh, titanium white to it, it just it really gets um, really starts to gray down uh, more so than any of the other paints, and it's, it's sort of a neutral. It's like right smack dab between our uh, uh, purple and our violet. It's not necessarily one way or the other, but uh, I guess if you had to, if, I guess if the manufacturer's press, they're gonna call it uh, violet. Um, so, but as, we, as you can tell, you can start to see it's, it's really starting to gray down. Now, this color would be great for um, atmospheric perspective and whatnot. It's, it's so much easier to work with than trying to gray down some of these other ones. Um, it's just uh, it's just easier to work with for uh, particular applications. Um, now, none of these are particularly bad or, or great. It really kind of depends on what it is that you're you're, you're working toward. Um, you'll really start to notice how these all um, the different properties when we start moving into our, um, our transparencies. So while expensive, um, this is really the only game in town if you want to paint uh, very opaquely. Um, using, uh, if you have, if you want a purple violet, this is really the only, uh, transparent one, or, uh, opaque one. Uh, everything else is going to be transparent or semi-transparent. So you would have to add white to the other colors to have any covering power. So if you want to paint over something, you'd probably have to, um, adjust the, um, value, but all right. So this is our tens. Let's move on to our transparencies. Okay, so let's go with our uh, first one up, which is Doxazine Purple. Um, all right, so as you can tell, it's already just black out of the tube, almost. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just, all right, now we're starting to see, now you can really start to see some of the uh, transparencies that we can come here as we pull the pile down and thin it out. Yeah, let's start to, there we go, look at that. Okay, so that's a beautiful color, right? That's, that's a really nice color. Um, again, this is a really hard color to try and mix with blue or red um, this is a uh, you know this is again perfect for those those uh, those flowers that are uh, incredibly uh, vibrant and have a really rich hue um, yeah I mean you can just see how dark it is out of the pile and how rich it can be as a transparency and as a as a tint um, this is like I said this is very much like our our um, Thalos, where it's just really, really rich. All right, so let's move on to our next color, which is uh, quinacridone purple. Okay, 
Uh, here we go. Here we go. All right. So now we start to see. Uh, again, this is a color. I believe only Daniel Smith is the one that uh, that produces this color uh, in their oils and um, oh, uh, watercolor line. But uh, so so here we go. As we start to really bring out the transparency of this color, uh, much like most quinacridones, this is a very very transparent color. Um, but it, it was just great for glazes. This is a perfect color um, for raspberries or any sort of berry color. This is good for shadow colors and whatnot. So, okay, let's move on to our next color. Our next color is um, ultramarine uh, violet. Okay, so as we start to draw, draw it down, it's dark and oh, look, here we go. It looks a little very similar to our to our uh, dioxazine purple. Um, so let's pull it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's very close to doxazine. Um, it's interesting that uh, it lost a lot of its um, potency here as a tint, but as a transparency, it's a it, it holds its own. Um, ultramarine is ultramarine violet is a very very light fast color. Um, there's some uh, scholarly debate um, still out whether doxazine is uh, light fast or. Um, so that uh, we'll keep our keep our eyes out to see what uh, see what the the uh, the scientists say about uh, doxazine purple. But this is a this is a lovely color. It, uh, it has very it, it definitely leans more blue uh, compared to the uh, the purples next to it. Yeah, um, but for lilacs this would be perfect uh, over the doxazine. But um, okay. So let's move on to our next color, which is a manganese violet. All right, let's draw this guy down and see what we can get from him. All right, so manganese violet is a semi-transparent or a um, semi-opaque pigment. So it'll have its, so if we look a little bit here, it has just a little more coverage for it than the uh, than the other three paint pigments next to it. Um, yeah, let's see. We can draw it down a little bit more, and yeah, you can kind of see how it has more covering power as a uh, as a semi semi transparent. You can see the the white struggles a little bit to come through as easily as our other paints. Let's see if we can thin this out a little bit more. Let's see if we can get that white to come through a little bit, shine shine on this uh, this transparency a little more. But. Um, but yeah, so you, you can see it has a little bit of a red bias to it, uh, very similar to the quinacridone over here. But let's move on from our transparent and semi-transparent paints over to our opaque. Uh, last guy on our tour, which is the uh, cobalt violet. All right. All right. So we can tell that as a uh, as a transparency, it it it's not really a strong suit, but. Um, We'll also notice that it's uh, has the lightest value out of all the colors, uh, especially straight out uh, straight out of the tube. You can still scumble with it a little bit, um, yeah, but it, it just has a lot of covering power. Uh, but transparency is probably probably not the is not yeah. Here we go, it's just a little bit of scumbling with it. You can see that the again the the white kind of struggles to come through. Which makes perfect sense as a as a uh, as an opaque paint. So as we begin to conclude our tour of the purples and violets, uh, you can tell there's we have uh, lots of different properties. We have paints with pigments with lots of different properties that uh, the artist has available available to them. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this exploration of the purple family, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.